Hey guys, welcome to CPM2, Module 2, Lesson 7. We're going to be graphing linear equations today. So the first thing we have to be able to, to do is identify linear equations. <clears throat> and so you have a definition of what a linear equation is. Um, this is what we considered standard form when you have ax plus by equals c. It says where a, b, and c are all real numbers. So for example, that'd be something like 3x plus 4y equals 7. You have a number for a, b, and c. So that's your definition of a linear equation. <clears throat> and again, that's, that's considered your standard form. But here are all some examples of linear equations. You have 2x plus y equals 8. That's, again, standard form. you got your x and y on one side. Your x and y can be on different sides. Again, x and y on different sides. Or you can just have one of those. You could also have the other one. We could have x equals 8. The big thing is, is that you have to make sure that the exponent on both x and y is 1. So what is not a linear equation would be something like x squared plus y equals 8. Because of that squared, it's not an equate it's not a linear equation if you have anything to any exponent that's not a linear equation so to example one says to determine whether each equation is a linear equation and two variables so you're looking does it have an exponent if it has an exponent then it's a no um, or even if it's something just like a number that's definitely not an equation it has no equal sign so number or letter A, I guess. Um, I accidentally put our one of our examples as the first one, so that one definitely is, but notice you have an X to the first and a Y to the first, because you don't have an exponent that is linear. Because of this squared right here, this one is non-linear. You have to the first, to the first, so linear, as long as you have at least one of these variables to that first power, that is still linear because of this squared here. I can't get a circle around that too. Very good. There we go. Non-linear. You have to the first, to the first. So linear. Again, y to the first, you have at least one variable that is linear. And then you are missing variables. You don't even have an equation. So this one is not even an equation, but I guess we can say it's nonlinear just for the purpose of this. Okay. <clears throat> Big part of this, um, the middle three pages, is actually graphing a straight line, a linear equation. So it says from geometry, we know that a straight line, that a straight line, I don't think that's supposed to be in there. A straight line is determined by just two points. Graphing a linear equation two ver in two variables then requires that we just, that we find just two points of its infinitely many solutions. Once we do, we plot the solution points and draw a line connecting the points. We usually find a third solution as well as a check. So because we need just two points, I mean, anywhere on this page, I could draw a dot here and a draw dot here and make a straight line through it, pretending that connects through that line. We could do a point here and a point here. And again, we have a straight line through it. So to make a line, all you need is two points and just connect them. <clears throat> However, we are going to find three. That third one is for a check. So we're going to find three ordered pair solutions. So you choose a value for one of the variables, x or y, then solve for the other variable. You plot the solution and then draw a line through the three points. This helpful hint here says all three points should fall in the same straight line. 
If not, check your order pair solutions for a mistake. So if you're graphing here and you have like maybe a point here and a point here, but then this point's over here, you can't draw a straight line and hit all three of those points. So that means you made a mistake somewhere. So either one of your ordered pairs are wrong or you just accidentally plotted the point wrong. So that's how we use that as a check. So for example two, for each equation, find three ordered pair solutions by completing the table, then use the ordered pairs to graph the equation. So what we did last lesson really set us up for this. If you did not watch the last lesson, you definitely wanna go back. But fill out these ordered pairs. Here's my equation, 3x minus 6y equals 3, and it does give me a hint here. If the equation is in standard form, which means x and y are on the same side of the equation, like this right here, plug 0 in for x and find a coordinate, plug in 0 for y to find a different coordinate. So you don't have to do that. This is just makes it easier. 0 always makes things a lot easier. So they give me this table here. And notice they do give me two points. They don't give me this third one at all. And we'll kind of go over that when we get there. But for this first one, it's telling you x is 0. So when x equals 0, plug a 0 in for this x here. So we have 3 times 0 minus 6y equals 3. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller. we got to do three equations down here. Sorry guys, bear with me. Okay, zero times anything is zero, so that just goes away. So when we bring this down, be kind of careful, we've got a negative in front of that six, so this is now negative six y equals three. Divide. And of course, for our very first one, we're going to get a nice little fraction. We get negative one half or negative 0.5. It's not totally uncommon to get fractions, but you it doesn't happen all the time. So that's just an unfortunate bad first example. So in here for this y, I'm going to go with the decimal. We're going to get a negative 0.5. So then my ordered pair is 0 comma negative 0.5. So now plug in 0 for your y. So in place of this y, I'm going to put a 0. So we get 3x minus 6 times 0 equals 3. Again, 0 times anything cancels out. So we're left with 3x equals 3, divide by both sides by 3, and we get x is 1. So that's a lot prettier of a number. So then my ordered pair is 1, 0. And so we need three points here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plot these two and draw my line through it. We've got 0, negative 0.5, so remember OU. Go over side to side before you go up or down. So I'm going 0 left to right from the origin. And then 0.5 down. So it's in between 0 and negative 1. My next point is 1, 0. So I'm going 1 over, 0 up or down. So my next point is right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a line through this, and this isn't a perfect line, I don't have a ruler or anything, but here is my line. And you want to make sure you put arrows on both ends because this line doesn't just stop on this graph, it keeps going infinitely in both directions. So what this means is, when I find that third point, there are anything, I, I can pick anything I want. It has infinitely many solutions. So if you go on this number line, we have a solution here, we have a solution here. Anything I plug in, whole number, fraction, decimal, anything, we have an infinite many points on here. So it does not matter what you plug in over here. 
you're going to get an answer that should fall on this line. Now, if you kind of notice, we have a pattern going on. It goes zero to one. You could put in a two here. That's perfectly fine. But to prove my point that we can put in anything we want, let's just skip down here to three. Now, again, this isn't the only number I can put in. I'm just picking three. So when x is three, we're gonna plug that in for this x here. So I've got three times three minus six y equals three. So three times three is nine. Get y by itself, so opposite of a positive nine is a negative nine. So I got negative six y equals negative six. Divide by negative six and we get y is negative over negative is positive one. So we get a one right here. So my ordered pair is three comma one. So when I plot this, we go left, or sorry, we go right, one, two, three, up one. That is on my line right there. <clears throat> okay, so not the only number we could have picked. Looks like there's another point here. There's another point here. There's another point here. We could have picked a lot of other things. We've got a bunch of different options on this graph. <clears throat> Let's try another one. So when it is in standard form, our hint says to plug in zero for X and Y and then just pick a third one. Now this hint right here says, this is not in standard form, right? You don't have your X and Y on the same side. So if the equation is said equal to x, plug in numbers for y. <clears throat> so I am plugging in numbers for here. Now, pick any number you want. If we choose to go with, let's go with like maybe negative 1, 0, and 1. I'm going to pick easy numbers if I'm picking them. Pick small numbers, don't pick, you know, crazy things. And so now just plug these in. The reason we're plugging these in for y is because now all we have to do is plug it in here and basically multiply by five and get our answer. So when x is negative one, or sorry, when y is negative one, plug that in for this y here. So I get x equals five times negative one, five times negative one, is negative 5. So I get negative 5 here. Now y is 0. Plug in a 0 for your y. So x equals 5 times 0. 5 times 0 is 0. So we get 0, 0. And then we get y is 1. So plug in 1 for your y x equals 5 times 1, so x is 5. So we get 5, 1. Because I picked in numbers to go to this y here, you just have to substitute it in and basically evaluate. There's nothing moving. You don't have to move anything around. So plot your three points. We've got negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down negative 1. Yeah, we start at the origin. I think it went over too many. Four, five. Okay. You got zero, 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 zero is the origin. And then we have five, one. So from the origin, you're going over one, two, three, four, five, positive, up one, since it's a positive one. And so connect your dots as perfectly as you can. Okay, so same hint, but this time opposite. Now my hint here says, if the equation is set equal to y, now plug in values for x. So if I plug in numbers here, now all I have to do is times that by one half and subtract from five. Let's just say you plug in a number to y. Let's say you plug in 10. 
because you plug in something for y, now you've got to add your 5 over and then divide over here. And so you've got to do some rearranging. But if you pick numbers for x, then it's just substitute in and multiply and subtract. <clears throat> now you do have another hint here. It says to avoid fractions, choose x values that are multiples of 2 to substitute in. So since we're always dividing by 2, it's going to be easiest if you pick numbers of multiples of 2. So instead of picking some 1s, let's go with like maybe a, a 0, a 2, and a 4. Again, rewrite this if you don't like that fraction. This is the same as 1 times x is x. So we get y equals x. This is still being divided by 2, so x over 2, and then minus 5. So when x equals 0, we get y equals 0 over 2 minus 5. 0 divided by anything is 0. So I get y equals 0 minus 5. So y is negative 5. So that's 0 comma negative 5. <clears throat> So now when x is 2, plug in a 2 to this x here. So we get y equals 2 over 2 minus 5. 2 over 2 is 1. And 1 minus 5 gives me y is negative 4. So 2, negative 4. And now when x is 4, we get y equals 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So 4 comma negative 3. So plot your points. 0, negative 5 means I'm going 0 left or right. But then from the origin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. 2, negative 4 means I'm going from the origin, 1, 2 over, 1, 2, 3, 4 down. And then 4, negative 3 from the origin, 1, 2, 3, 4 over, 1, 2, 3 down. So those are all in a straight line. Yeah, let's see if I can do better about connecting the dots. There we go. Okay, and again, make sure you've got arrows on the sides because these are infinitely going in both directions. D, we got X is 4. <clears throat> so my helpful hint here says if you are missing a Y variable, Solve for the x variable. The x coordinate will always have the same value in this case, and you will get a vertical line. You will get a vertical line when you have x equals some number. So if this equation here is telling me x is 4, then down here I am putting that x is 4. Now, if there's no y in this, it does not matter what I plug in this y column. So, pick the easiest things. Let's go with 0, 1, 2. This means I got 4, 0, 4, 1, 4, 2. It does not matter what you put in this column here. So, plot your points. 4, 0 means from the origin we're going 1, 2, 3, 4 over, 0 up or down. 4, 1 means from the origin you're going 1, 2, 3, 4 over, 1 up. 
And then four, two means we're going one, two, three, four, over, one, two, up. So there is my vertical line. Again, same thing but opposite on this one. <clears throat> Now that x is negative 5, my helpful hint here says if you are missing an x variable, solve for the y variable, the y coordinate will always have the same value in this case and you will get a horizontal line. So you're going to get a horizontal line when you have y equals some number. So on this one, because y equals negative 5, I'm going to put negative 5 down this column. So just like last time, when I didn't have a y in this equation, it didn't matter what I put in. Same thing here. These numbers don't matter. So I picked 0, 1, 2. That's honestly what I pick every single time. But let's just pick some different numbers. If we go negative 4, um, 3 and negative 2. So it's negative 4, negative 5, 3, negative 5, and negative 2, negative 5. Plot those points. So from the origin, I'm going negative 1, 2, 3, 4 over. Negative 5 means I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. Three, negative five from the origin. We're going one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five down. And then negative two, negative five from the origin. One, two, over. One, two, three, four, five down. So notice my points aren't as close together as they were in the first one, but you still get that perfectly straight, in this case, horizontal line. So these always seem to be the most missed when you get x equals a number and y equals a number. But these are your special cases when you get vertical and horizontal lines. And honestly, these, in my opinion, are a lot easier than this. I mean, look how much work is on this one and then my example A, right? That's a lot of work, you gotta do some figuring. These don't require any work at all. And then we're gonna finish this with some great word problems. So, um, it says jogging is one of the few sports that has been consistently increasing over the past few years. The number of people jogging in, many, in millions from the years 2000 to 2009 is given by the equation of y equals x plus 23, where x is the number of years after 2000. So complete the ordered pair. We have 8 comma something. So this is x and y, so that means x is 8, we're solving for y. So if x equals 8, plug that in to this x here. So that means we've got y equals 8 plus 23. 8 plus 23 gives me 31. So that is my ordered pair. Now part B says complete the sentence in which best describes the meaning of this ordered pair. So in blank, there were blank million joggers. <clears throat> well, X represents the number of years after 2000. Okay, and I double line the word after for a reason. So what you can't do here is because X is my years, we're not going to say in eight years. Because in eight years from when, in eight years from now, in eight years from the future, in eight years from when. So if X is the number of years after 2000, that means my X or my year is 
2,000 plus my 8. So we get 2,008. So in 2008, there were how many million joggers? Well, it tells me my Y, my Y right here is my, my people jogging. So there were 31 million. It says, if this trend continues, how many joggers will there be in 2024? So this is my X, but what does X equal? Well, X is gonna equal, remember it's after 2000. So we need to do 2024 minus 2000. So my X is 24. So plug that in to your equation. So when X equals 24, we're gonna have Y equals 24 plus 23. So Y is gonna equal 47. In general, word problems require a word solution. So how many joggers will there be in 2024? In 2024, there will be 47 million joggers. All right, <clears throat> last word problem. It says, example four says to solve. Let me change colors real quick. The value of a house, Y, in value X years after, a, after purchase by the formula. So complete the ordered pair. So again, this means when X is five, what is my Y? So, if X is five, plug that in here. We've got Y equals 75,000, nope, 7,500, times five plus 120,000. Boy, do I wish we had calculators, guys. Let's multiply. 7,500 times five, zero times anything is zero, zero times anything is zero, five times five is 25, carry your two, seven times five is 35, plus your two is 37. So we get Y equals 37,500, now we need to add that to 120,000. So let's take that number and add 120,000. Zero plus zero, zero, zero plus zero, zero, five plus zero is not zero, is five, seven plus zero is seven, three plus two is five, bring down your one. So my Y equals 157,500. Okay, and that's technically what goes in there, but I can't fit that in there. So B wants us to write a sentence explaining the ordered pair we found in, that should be in part A. So my X represents years. This is why it's so helpful to underline what your variables mean. So in five years, 
Okay, and notice we can say it in this one because it doesn't tell me like after a certain year. So in five years, this right here means that's how much we bought the house for. So um, we'll say something like your house Um, actually, no. In five years, the value of your house is $157,000 if you originally bought it for this much. If it was originally a hundred and twenty thousand. All right, guys, that's all I have for this lesson. Let me know if you have any questions, and of course, pause and rewind this video.